AM560, The Source. We've got John from Clear Choice, who is really uh, our resident, not just expert, but, but he supplies a lot of us in our group with, with coolant. Uh, we're going to talk about why he's integral to what we do, and the, especially the recycling part of what we do. Our, our key antifreeze coolant supplier, in my case, it's not just that. There's other products that you also provide me. But you, you basically, in my shop, we used to do our own internal recycling of coolant, which is, is not mandated by the state that you have to do that, but it's a good environmental thing to do. There's no sense, you know, just disposing of that stuff and throwing it out, or you can't throw it out anyways, but you know what, you, you get yep. my drift. Rather, rather than, than not reusing it, let's clean it up, reuse it, because there's no reason not to. I like to say that we were green before green was in uh, uh, ethylene glycol. Yeah, because we've used you guys for years, for by the way. a long time. Well, you and I have done some laps around the sun together. Yes. Um, so ethylene glycol is made from either oil or gas, so it's consuming a natural resources. There's a carbon footprint associated with that. And actually, it doesn't really go bad. The, the chemistry goes okay. bad. So when people say, well, my antifreeze is shot, it doesn't mean it can't be recovered. So we're one of, oh, about a dozen companies across the U.S. that use a vacuum distillation system. Here down in Commerce City, have a large, uh, almost like a refinery. Okay. A few hundred thousand gallons of tank farm, a uh, big evaporator, and a distillation column. And we produce, we call a blend stock, which would be uh, purified water and glycol. Okay. Treat that, polish that, then we uh, purchase the inhibitors that make that product into a gold antifreeze or a conventional green or an extended... Because it all has the same, or I shouldn't say all, but most has the same base anyways, the correct? The same base stock, yes. You have a difference in, uh, you folks recall Sierra being a safer antifreeze. That's a propylene glycol, which is somewhat less toxic, and it doesn't taste as good. So your dog or your local squirrel is not right. inclined to drink it as much if it were puddled on the ground. Whereas ethylene glycol is pretty sweet, actually. They like it. Yeah, you know, I've gotten a drip or two on my tongue now and again. You go, wow, that's a pretty good coffee sweetener, maybe. Yeah, yeah it's not bad. Bad news, your body can't metabolize it. Okay. But, uh, back and that's to why point, it kills animals. That's why it kills animals. So okay. back to your point, though, with, the, uh, with a clean blend stock, then we can produce anything from what I would call an old-school antifreeze up through the latest and greatest. Good. And, uh, again, the way... The way we do it in our facilities, and I know it's in our Colorado Select facilities, is we, when you come in to get a, a coolant uh, flush service, we do a water pump, anything along those lines where we're servicing the cooling system or opening the system up, draining coolant, we have a tank that we basically store all of that used coolant in. We then get to a point where we need new coolant because we're using new to replace the old stuff. We put a phone call into John. He shows up, he sucks all the old stuff out, drops all the good new stuff back off. Our old stuff goes out, gets recycled, gets handled, comes back again later on. At least a portion of it does. Probably. And, and we get that back and we reuse that again. And that's, again, another way that we stay green. And, and it's an environmental uh, savings. And it's also some cost savings because if we're not using new product all the time, there is some cost savings to that, although... Uh, I'll be honest, by the time you go through that entire process of cleaning everything up, putting all the ad packs back in and so on, we're, we're about back up to what new cost is, but we have taken an old product, made it new without having to redo, uh, without having to take new stock to That's do right. that, which is a plus. And, and what, what's interesting is you'd be surprised that you, the recovery rate is not maybe as high as you might suspect in that on a, for a typical repair shop, uh, we will see about 40 to 50 percent of the gallons come back as used, mm. meaning that a water pump is gone or there's a leak or, you know, basically right. you have loss to the environment, right. we call it. Right. Now, a, a maintenance shop, that, you know, folks that mm. uh, go to, a, you know, people that are, again, I'm going to preach a bit here, uh, find a good shop. We have a lot of folks in the network here and use them consistently. And by using the same shop, they can help you out because they're going to know your That's car right. better. That's exactly right. And those shops, folks, recover probably 60 to 70% yeah. of their That's coolant right. because right. they're doing coolant flushes. That's right. And we're one of those. That it, what John just described is what we do. And what he's saying is our goal with our particular customers, and it's true across our, our group here, Acara Select uh, Napa Auto Care Center, is it's our goal to not have that hose failure or that water pump failure. Not only does it does it harm the environment by putting all that stuff down the storm drain, which I want to get back to in our next segment, which is a no-no. We'll talk about that in a second. 
but it saves you money because you're planning the maintenance rather than a repair, and it's always cheaper to maintain than it is to repair the car. So we're one of those that recovers a lot. You bet, and that's just it, as I love it when, well, I don't like the news when someone says, hey, John, you've got an issue with your car, be prepared for but I would rather hear be, right. be prepared for this That's or right. plan for this $300 That's right. or $500 That's right. as opposed to getting that all in one surprise. Let's take another caller. Don, welcome to Drive Radio. Uh, by the way, we have a line open, 303-477-5600. Especially today, if you've got a coolant question, call us. Not that we won't take other calls. We will. But if you've got a coolant question, anything along those lines, we'd love to have John answer it for you. But, Don, welcome to Drive Radio. How are you today? Well, good morning, John. Good morning. I'm happy. I'm in good shape. How are you guys doing? We're, we're doing very well, actually. Great day. Great day. I had a question for John Panasevich. Uh, I wondered if his company would accept guys coming up and dropping off antifreeze, used antifreeze. That's a great question. We have a lot of folks that do that. Uh, you can Google this address, 9009 Quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E. That's in Henderson. However, we take it too. most of our... Yep. Most of our shops will be happy to have you drop yep. that with them so you right. avoid the extra travel yep. time and so on. Yep. So I, I can speak, Don, for the majority of our Colorado Select facilities. There is no charge to drop off either waste oil or waste coolant in this case on waste oil. A lot of us have oil burning uh, waste oil heaters that we actually helps us in the shops because that goes in to produce heat, which saves us money, saves the environment, etc. And as far as coolant, we just put that in our big tank, and when it's full, I call John, and away it goes. Okay. Yeah, yeah these well, shops I can, are really I can really drop off about. antifreeze there. That's no problem. Yep, and so, you know, not to take anything away from driving out to see John, he'd love to see you, but we can definitely save everybody a trip by just going down to your local car at a select facility and dropping it off there. Okay, thanks very much. I'll do that. You betcha, Don. Thanks very much. That was a great question, by the way. With that, let's take a quick break. We're going to come back, talk more coolant with uh, John from Clear Choice, and we'll be back right after these messages here on Drive Radio, AM 560, The Source. We'll get into this in just a moment, but I'm one that says have somebody do the flush that's a professional. Yes. A, they're going to get a better job done. They're going to look at components that unless you're a, unless you're a, a, a seasoned technician, you're not going to know what to look at. And what I mean by that is they're going to look inside the radiator for corrosion. They're going to look at the radiator or the, the coolant hoses themselves, radiator and heater hoses. They're going to look at the intake manifold to see if there's any leaks coming out of that. They're going to look at the water pump. They're going to move the pulleys, determine whether there's any looseness. And, and honestly, John, those are things that unless you know what you're doing, you, you have no idea what you're looking at, correct? That is correct. If we look back, if we'll just go back to uh, the way we grew up, and we won't say how old we are, but, you know, basically in the fall, it was was time to change the Prestone. And right. so we changed the antifreeze every year, and, right. and Dad knew where the stopcock was on the radiator. Yep. And uh, I don't remember where it went after that. Um, but then we'll just get a new, some new antifreeze. So I want to talk about those two things. We already talked about the proper disposal thereof. But now the consumer has been, in the last five years, has really been exposed to uh, pre-diluted coolant. Okay. Because we used to buy Prestone full strength. Right. It was no such thing as pre-diluted coolant when I was growing up. Correct. You had to add water to it. It was a 50-50 mix. You mixed it yourself, put it in, and yeah. off you went. And so for those of you who may have, may if you have a slow leak in your system, you still better have that diagnosed. But if you really have the need to have fluid for topping off, really recommend you pick up that gallon jug of 50-50. Because it's mixed properly initially. It's mixed properly. It has deionized water. Yeah. And now you can top off That's right. your vehicle with that. Great point. But if you find Great yourself point. using that a lot, uh, then you have a problem. You've got a That's problem. That's right. We'll talk about that as soon as we come back. Let's take Randy real quick before we go to our next break. Randy, welcome to Drive Radio. How are you doing today? Oh, pretty good, guys. Uh, I had a question. Uh, I, I had my vehicle flushed at the dealership. It's a 99 Cherokee. They, they put in the orange stuff. Uh, so a couple of questions. Uh, for top-off reasons, can I just go out and get the orange Prestone, or should I go back and pay $30 to have their stuff that says Diamond Chrysler on it? Ah, that's a uh, That would be one question. Okay. Uh, should I take uh, that one right Go now? ahead. I would say that the get for, for top-off purposes, you really right. could use either the orange that you would find at your, at your store, off the shelf, again, I'd buy the pre-diluted, and even the GO5, that gold, that they call it global gold, mm -hmm. it's on the shelf. That's going to do fine as a top-off. The main thing that you hit on, which is really good, folks, is having the coolant completely changed out reduces any um, 
conflict of interest stories with regard to, well, I had this kind of court, right. now I have that kind of court. Right. If it's got half and half, there's possible contamination issues. Right. But the main thing is getting a flush by a dealer, getting a flush by a professional is a really good idea. Yep. Yep. Right, I figure they had the proper tools and the setup and there's no rigging. Nope, you're uh, right. That's the way uh, we all do it. Uh, one of the other questions, uh, I had it in, uh, I had them change my oil while they were doing a crank seal, and they topped, they topped off all the fluids, and I was like, you, you didn't put anything in that radiator overflow, did you? And they said no, and I was very happy, because they have global, and then I'm sure it's good, and it's going to mix, and it's fine, but it also is going to contaminate it, isn't it? It's going to lower the grade if you put in the green orange, or the green yellow in with your orange. Not um, not that much. I mean, I, I would agree with you that you just really don't want to start to do uh, different chemistries. The color is somewhat indicative, but it's really unfortunate now because a lot of OEs have gone to trying to scare their customers. you got to use this coolant. Now we have fuchsia coolant. We have blue coolant. Right. We, have, we right. have, like, all the colors. It's a rainbow. But, you know, if you, stick, if you stick with what was already in that or ask the uh, service techs, you know, if it's a, uh, organic acid, I mean, that, again, we get into so much chemistry here, it's, I don't want to confuse the public, but I would say the global gold pre-diluteds are a very good way for the consumer to top off. Okay. okay. Uh, and I guess I should have paid more attention a minute ago. You were talking about top off. Can I buy the the full strength? I mean, I'm not dunk, I'm not putting a lot in there. From time to time, I'll top off. I, I personally, I'd rather put in the full strength than the 50/50. No, in fact, you're you're actually it's not helping by putting in the full strength. If you're going to do that, get yourself a water bottle. Go ahead and do some have some 